Demult dice is a great game to practice multiplication. Here, we're targeting multiplication while applying the commutative and associative properties of multiplication. This is a third, fourth, and fifth grade game, really targeting third and fourth grade standards. Our game is a two-player game. However, a demult dice can be two to four players. You are going to use three dice, and then you can decide how many points you want to be the winner. So in our game, we're going to play to 10 points. As long as all players decide and agree on the same amount of points at the beginning of the game, you're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna roll all three dice and we are going to choose two of the dice to add and then we are going to take that sum and we are going to multiply it by the third die. So let's go ahead and we'll play for player one. Hockey net keeps our dice in control. I rolled a six a four and a five. So I'm going to take my piece of scratch paper. Parents, it's really important to allow your children to have scratch paper so that way they can write out all of their options. In this game, the player who has the greatest total earns the point. Okay, so we have six, four, and five. So I'm going to take six and four and I'm going to add those together. I'm gonna put that in parentheses. This shows that this is a step that I did first, that I am going to add my six and four together, and then six and four is 10, and I'm going to multiply that by five. These dice serve as a really good tool because we can move them around. And if I need to move it farther away so that visually I can see these together to add and then multiply, it allows me that opportunity. So six plus four is 10 and 10 times five is 50. Now I did that all in my head. It is okay parents to allow your children to write these out. So six plus four is 10 and then 10 times five is 50. And that just gives a little more visual support and also helps children begin showing their work as well. Okay. So that was option number one. Let me draw a line here. So let's do, move these dice around. Six plus five. And then that is going to be times four. Six plus five is 11 and 11 times four, those are always fun. I like multiplying things by 11, is 44. So this way of multiplying is not going to result in a higher sum than this. So I am definitely not choosing this one. Okay, so let's see. Our last combination that we can make is six uh, is five plus four, and then multiply that by six. I'm gonna draw a line there again so I can see, separate them out just for me visually, it helps me. Five plus four, put in parentheses. That's what I'm doing first. That would be nine, nine times six. Nine times six. Oh, I wrote nine because my brain said nine. Nine times six equals 54. And 54 is a greater total than 50. So this is the one I am going to choose to write down here. So player one is going to go with five plus four times six equals 54. Okay, now it's player two's turn. Player two is trying to create a total that's greater than 54. If player two does that, they earn the point. Okay, so I have Three plus four, I do in parentheses first, that's seven. Seven times five is 35. I can also do three plus five, and instead of writing the whole equation out, I can just do eight. Eight times four is 32. And my last one is five plus four is nine. I'm just gonna write that to hold this down 
so that way I can visually see it. And nine times three is 27. So clearly 35 is the higher total. <laughs> By having them write this down all the time, it's taking away from that gameplay and that fun back and forth, back and forth. So this does not always have to happen. In fact, I can just go ahead and record as 35. And having that math talk and engaging, how did you get 35? Well, I did um, three plus four is seven and seven times five is 35. The more that we're able to actually move the dice and say eight, eight times four is 32 and be able to to manipulate and do all of these back and forth very quickly that creates the fluency and the fun and gameplay which ultimately is going to help students with their multiplication facts which is exactly what we want so here player two did not score greater than 54 points so player one did get that point it's up to you and your team how you want to write these out this is more for recording our information so that way we know who won which round and that the points are accurate and again in our game we were playing to 10 points wins maybe this is a good idea to write this out so everyone's on the same page it's up to you some other scoring options can be to take the total that each player gets and keep a running total and the first player to hit 200 points is the winner or perhaps the first player to earn 300 points or 500 points is the winner. So there's lots of different options. You could also play a game of five rounds and whoever has the most points scored after five rounds is the winner. Lots of different options to come up with. Most importantly, the players, before they start to play, need to agree. Are they going to play to a certain number of points, to this type of certain number of running total points, or play a certain number of rounds? So that way it's agreed upon beforehand. So this is how you play Demolt Dice, have fun.